A century ago, a visionary German architect conceived what could be deemed the most audacious scheme in history. He aimed to literally empty the world's oceans. In the realm of colossal engineering endeavors, this proposal stood as the epitome of ambition, surpassing the likes of the pyramids of Giza, the Hoover Dam, and even the Panama Canal. What drove him to pursue such a colossal endeavor? And was there a plausible chance of success for his grand plan? In 1928, Thurman Sorgel presented an ambitious idea, constructing an enormous dam across the Strait of Gibraltar. This proposal aimed to replicate the Mycenaean salinity crisis on a smaller scale, creating fresh opportunities for settlement, enabling significant hydropower generation, and uniting Europe and Africa into a novel supercontinent named The designation Atlantropa originated from the fusion of Atlantics and Europa, intending to evoke thoughts of Atlantis, the mythical submerged city. It's a challenge to discern which concept appears more plausible the Atlantis myth or the Atlantropa plans. In essence, Sorgel envisioned the drainage of the Mediterranean. By depleting this vast body of water, he aimed to liberate new land for European settlement, addressing the Lebensraum's issue without resorting to warfare. The Mediterranean, approximately eight times the size of modern Germany, represented a considerable expanse of untapped space. Sorgel pictured extensive stretches of land emerging from the depths, transformed into fertile plains. His vision comprised intricate networks of towns and cities, offering people the freedom to live peacefully without concerns of space limitations. Furthermore, with the Mediterranean removed, travel between Europe and Africa would be facilitated, paving the way for additional living space as Europeans migrated to Africa, establishing new cities and homes. Sorgel's inspiration stemmed from a genuine geological occurrence. The Mediterranean exhibits a unique characteristic where evaporation exceeds the inflow from rivers. The constant sea level is maintained by the Atlantic Ocean, flowing through the Strait of Gibraltar around 5 million years ago. Tectonic plates sealed off the strait, isolating the Mediterranean. Without Atlantic waters replenishing it, the sea began to recede. When the strait reopened, a massive influx refilled the basin. Sorgel aspired to recreate this phenomenon on a condensed timeline, recognizing the impracticality of waiting for tectonic plate movements. Instead, he proposed a solution involving civil engineering. The focal point of Sorgel's ambitious proposition involved erecting a dam across the Strait of Gibraltar, replacing the natural tectonic closure of this water passage with a man-made alternative. Scructing this dam posed substantial challenges. At its deepest point, the Strait of Gibraltar reached a depth of 900 meters, and even in shallower areas, the distance from the water's surface to the seabed was still 300 meters. During that era, no dam had ever been constructed at a height of 300 meters, a feat that remains rare even today. Currently, only two dams globally, namely Jinping I and Nurik, have surpassed this height, both situated in China. The depth of the water presented just one facet of the obstacles Sorgel would encounter. The considerable width of the strait added another layer of complexity. At its narrowest juncture, the strait spanned 13 kilometers from one side to the other. In the realm of dam construction, such a breadth represented a monumental distance. To provide perspective, the Jinping I and the Nurek Dam, the tallest dams to date, traverse distances of 600 meters and 700 meters, respectively. In essence, Sorgel's envisioned dam across the Strait of Gibraltar not only necessitated surpassing the unprecedented height of the largest dams, but also required a span 20 times longer from one end to the other. In retrospect, these proposals reflected the prevailing colonialist sentiments in Europe at the time neglecting the existing communities in Africa who were resistant to the influx of Europeans and the appropriation of their lands. While Sorgel aimed to prevent a crisis of war in Europe, the disregard for the impact on the lives of African citizens was evident. See, criticism of the Atlantropa project extended beyond its social implications. Even if the project were successfully executed, concerns about public safety emerged. What if a seismic event or a terrorist attack led to the collapse of one of the dams? The re-entry of the Atlantic Ocean into the Mediterranean would result in the complete destruction of the towns and cities Sorgel had envisioned. Financial considerations also played a significant role in the skepticism surrounding the project. While the exact cost remains uncertain, it was projected to be an exorbitant sum. 
for comparison, the Zuider Z works, significantly smaller in scale, cost well over a billion US dollars. The financial burden necessitated contributions from all European countries, but in the era preceding the European Union, such extensive collaborations seemed improbable. Lastly, and perhaps most evidently, doubts regarding the overall feasibility of the project were pervasive. The intricacies of implementing such an unprecedented engineering endeavor raised legitimate concerns among skeptics, 